Mitchell coming off his third straight all-star season averaging just under 26 points a game and in return the Jazz they get a hole they get Lori Markkinen they get Ochai Abadji they get uh, Colin Sexton they get three unprotected first round picks and two pick swaps Sexton was the eighth pick in the draft once upon a time member of the all rookie team he will sign a four year 72 million dollar fully guaranteed deal as part of a sign and trade. Now the first reaction you wanted was from New York Knicks fan Stephen A. Smith yesterday. Here's how he feels. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Every single time, man, something goes wrong. I wanted Donovan Mitchell in New York. I shut my mouth. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. Because I didn't want to blow it. I didn't want to get in the way. You got about seven or eight first round picks. You got R.J. Barrett, you got Julius Randle, you got Toppin, you got Emmanuel Quickly, and you still couldn't get Donovan Mitchell. You still couldn't get him. So once again, we're going to go into another season, and the New York Knicks are devoid of a star. They're somewhere other than in a New York Knicks uniform. See, this is what I'm trying to say, man. <laughs> they make me sick. Nothing ever gets done in New York with the Knicks. Nothing. Nothing. I'm be cool. I just, it just never ends with the Knicks. It just never freaking ends. I think he's crying. And so here he is, the man who broke the news, as always, yesterday, Woj. Uh, that really was, I mean, maybe it's because of where I live, but that was the first reaction I got everywhere, on the street, on the golf course yesterday. How did the Knicks not get Donovan Mitchell? <coughs> Every fan in this town had already counted that as done a long time ago. Uh, Greeny, uh, the Knicks and Jazz had really closed the gap uh, in their trade talks on Donovan Mitchell Sunday night into Monday. And I think when Utah came back with what they thought were a couple of options for New York to do, uh, you know, New York wanted to close the gap a little more. They didn't want to do the three unprotected picks uh, on a deal that didn't include Quentin Grimes with R.J. Barrett. So they don't get a deal done. They commit to that extension with R.J. Barrett Monday night. And Kobe Altman, the Cleveland Cavaliers president, he's at the U.S. Open Monday night. He's watching... Serena Williams. He sees our reporting that the talks had broken down with New York. And over the next 48 hours, they negotiated uh, this deal for Donovan Mitchell. Utah never called back New York to give them a chance to top it. And so that agreement was reached yesterday afternoon. And now the Cavaliers are loaded in the Eastern Conference with Donovan Mitchell. That's exactly right. How would you describe the magnitude of this? Because I, I don't know that people paid much attention last year to just how good Cleveland was for a lot of the season, and they had a bunch of injury problems. But with Donovan Mitchell in the fold, I mean, th this is a legitimate team to be reckoned with in the Eastern Conference, yes? This is a team that may have as many as four all-star caliber players, and they're young. This is a team that's not only going to be really good uh, now, they are built to be really good for a very long time, a force in the Eastern Conference and beyond. And you know, Donovan Mitchell, three years left on his deal, and he's from New York. Certainly, the idea of playing at the Garden, playing for the Knicks, uh, really appealed to him. Uh, but I know that he was really enthusiastic last night uh, when he talked to the Cavaliers, started to talk to his new teammates, and, and, and saw, like everyone else does, just how deep, how talented, how good this team is going to be, and now New York, you know, they go back without any player of that caliber available in the marketplace. New York does have a lot of assets, and certainly, you know, they're banking on R.J. Barrett with his new $100 million deal to make another step this season. And, of course, you know, they added Jalen Brunson in the offseason. All right, I need you to call Stephen A. for me, okay? Because I'm a little worried about it. We got to make sure that <laughs> he's all right. That's once on again. It. What Russell Wilson is getting offered? The idea of liking a tweet talking about Walmart money, the new owners of uh, the Broncos being able to pay Russell Wilson that type of money suggests that maybe Lamar would be interested in a contract like that, which changes everything. Because prior to this, 
I could understand the Baltimore Ravens and Steve Bashotti saying just because the Browns did something somewhat unprecedented doesn't mean we have to. But I cannot for the life of me understand why they wouldn't pay him top of the market money that's not fully guaranteed like Russell or like um, Patrick Mahomes or like any of these other guys who have gotten Josh Allen, who have gotten contracts recently. So it kind of raises some questions and it's been quiet negotiations from both sides so far. It'll be interesting to find out the details when we do. Well, let's show everybody what you're talking about. So in case anyone didn't see it, because uh, Lamar Jackson has been very quiet coming out of there. Uh, so the only time we really hear from him has been on social media. So here's what Dominique is talking about. Marlon Humphrey uh, tweeted Walmart money different, meaning those are the new owners in Denver and the Russell Wilson uh, contract extension to which Lamar Jackson responded. Uh, to be completely honest, I had to ask a lot of people what that meant. <laughs> Uh, but I, I guess it means I swear, like he's 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 he's, he's co-signing, right? That that idea, uh, Dominique, help me with this because I don't know that I'm using the right words <laughs> to describe what that means. But basically, he's yeah. saying yes, you're right. They've got a lot more money, and he's he's essentially. How would you interpret what it is he's saying there, candidly? Yeah, no, I think you nailed it right on the money right there. But it, to to me, what it suggests is that money is different over there. They have the ability to offer and the willingness to offer and sign that type of money, which would suggest that Baltimore does not or has not, which is shocking to me because I thought it was about getting like over 250 guaranteed. If you can't get like 160 guaranteed, then I don't know what the Ravens are doing. They're trying to enter this season in a situation where they might be rooting against their own quarterback. Like the better he plays, the more he accomplishes the things that I suspect they all want to accomplish, the more expensive he's going to get. For the life of me, I can't understand that they're not going to sign him for something close to what Russell has received. Fair enough. So, Jeremy Fowler, my insider extraordinaire. Let me ask you the question that I think is on the minds of every Ravens fan and maybe every football fan. Yeah. What the actual heck is going on in that negotiation right now? We're nine days from them kicking off their season. Yeah, so I've been asking around this this morning. The people I've talked to remain skeptical with something will get done by week one. I'm told the Deshaun Watson deal has complicated matters for a long time because of that $230 million all guaranteed. I'm told the Ravens have tried in the last month. They've upped their offer, but it's just not quite enough. And talking to some people around the league, to Dominique's point, there's a feeling as they're trying. Do they really want to try hard enough to get it done? Because they know what it would take. It would take a massive number that they're just not comfortable with right now. So this is shaping up to be a two-year standoff because he's on the last year of his deal. Then they would franchise tag him next year. Mike T., I mean, you're a, you're a general manager. What does that do? If, if this is a two-year standoff, if he plays this season without a deal, if he, they franchise him next year, I understand he gets a bunch of money. What does it do? It's destabilizing because it's hard to build your team when you have a massive question mark. Are you franchising him? Is it the exclusive tag? Would somebody give multiple first round picks? Do we draft somebody? Do we need a veteran to pair with the draft choice? It's hard to put a team around uncertainty. And we saw that with Kirk Cousins for a number of years in Washington. So if I'm the Ravens, I lock Lamar in a room this weekend. I throw out the high, I throw out the low, and I come up with something that we can both live with. Because without a greenie, this will be the first question that John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson are asked all season long, any updates, and it becomes draining, it becomes a distraction, and the task at hand should be like, hey, the off season's over, let's go win a championship. So Diana told us yesterday that the expectation is that with or without an extension that he is going to play the season. Yeah. Very quickly, Dominique, and I, whenever we talk about Lamar Jackson, I think back to this picture that we had. I think we have it here uh, of you taking your son to a game and your son is wearing a Lamar Jackson jersey. And so, I mean, there's yeah. a human element to all of this, right? That's a video that, that Dominique took, uh, and that's his son there wearing, you know, a Lamar shirt. Uh, Chiefs game. And, and, there's a human being, right, we're talking yeah. about, who is, is sitting there with the ability to sign a contract that is going to change, you know, the next seven generations uh, for his family. And, and he might be about to go out there and play without it and, and put himself right. in harm's way, which is what football players do. If he were to call you up and say, hey, should I play this season without this deal? What would you tell him? I'd say absolutely, because I think he is – Outstanding, And I, I understand that he could expose himself to some injury. But again, like we talked about in the first segment, this is a risky game, and that's part of it. You know what I think actually happens? Worst case scenario is that he um, has a mediocre season. Are the Ravens going to then move on? No. He's going to play in the fifth year. He's going to get franchised and continue to get paid. 
best case scenario is the price just keeps going up because he plays like the Lamar Jackson that we saw last year prior to injury like the Lamar Jackson that we saw the year prior to that, frankly, like the only Lamar Jackson we really know as a centerpiece of this offense that is dominant. So I suspect that there's nothing but good things will happen if Lamar goes out there and plays the way that we know he's capable of. All right, starting after week one, I certainly hope that he does. Week one, they play the Jets. Uh, <laughs> I, I have mixed feelings. All right, hold the football for a minute because we had a Woj bomb yesterday.